You were never a fan of the drawdown proposed by President Trump or no. now being executed by President Biden. Let's talk about this ending here and what is at stake, because the door is closing to help Afghan allies and even Americans who are outside the airport in Kabul. What can you tell us? Well, right now we have Americans, American citizens, passport holders behind Taliban lines. Uh, the numbers are unclear, but they're significant numbers. Uh, while we may establish control of the airfield, the Taliban have surrounded the airfield and are not letting people through. So what I was hoping to hear from President Biden yesterday, rather than kind of a litany of justifications of how we got here, was how do we move forward in the near and the long term? And in the near term, how are we going to get American citizens out? Are we going to expand beyond the airfield and go get them? Do the troops on the ground have the authority and the rules of engagement to do that, or even outside of Kabul to get Americans out? I'll remind you that we have had a Navy veteran, Mark Frerichs, held hostage by the Taliban for a year and a half. The thing the Taliban wanted the most was the withdrawal of U.S. forces. One would have thought we could have at least gotten him out. So we now face multiple, the prospect of multiple American uh, held hostage. On top of then, how do we get 70 to 80,000 Afghan SIV and their families out with no flights moving, with the Taliban surrounding the airfield? Uh, you know, the, sit the withdrawal debate aside, the execution here has been nothing short of disastrous. When you add up all of those people, and we actually had John Kirby from the Pentagon on last hour. He seemed to put the number of Americans somewhere between five and 10,000. I believe that is the number that he put. That's a huge number. It's a huge number. It was a bigger number than I, I was expecting to How do we withdraw all of our military assets before getting Americans out? And so that's the question. Not, you, you put those Americans together with the visa the SIV folks together with their families, then you consider, for instance, Afghans who worked with the embassy, who right. worked with American organizations, who worked with American journalism outlets. You're looking at safely well over 100,000 people. Any indication that there's going to be some sort of corridor to provide safe passage that's for what, them or that the Taliban might lay off as they try to make it to the airport? That's what I was hoping to hear from our commander in chief yesterday. How long will we hold this air bridge? Are we going to establish uh, corridors? The State Department has to stop giving people death sentences over typos and paperwork and the wrong forms filled out. Uh, they expanded the program. It's called P1 and P2. So if, you're, if you weren't necessarily an interpreter, but you fit all those other categories, you stood for democracy and freedom publicly and against the Taliban, you still have to get to a third country to then to Pakistan or, 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 or Iran, we could eliminate that program. The State Department could drastically streamline the bureaucracy like they did for the South Vietnamese uh, so many years ago. And then what are the rules of engagement for the military? How long will we keep that air bridge there? I, I want to ask. We don't you, have answers to any of there that. There are no answers to yeah. that. I also want to ask you something we've been talking with other veterans about, which is kind of the moral injury of this. Yeah. You know, I think talking to a lot of veterans, they look back on their service, and when they find value in it, it isn't necessarily in the policy that took them to Afghanistan, but they are so proud of the fact that they served alongside their brothers and sisters in arms. And for veterans like yourself, that includes your Afghan allies who went on so many dangerous combat missions yeah. with you. What does it do to you as you consider they may be sacrificed? I've been in a, a very, like so many others, I think unhealthy mix of rage and, and grief. Uh, and it's not just the veterans, it's Gold Star families, it's victims of 9-11. And you know, I want them to hear me loud and clear. Uh, their sacrifice was not in vain. It was not in vain. America was kept safe for decades. We had an entire generation grow up, not worried about planes flying into buildings or suicide bombers on school buses. But the thing that has me perhaps the most upset uh, is that that's all now gone. Al Qaeda 3.0 will come roaring back. Where Biden is so fundamentally wrong is this isn't an Afghan problem, this is a global problem. And terrorism that grows in Afghanistan will spread like a cancer. It won't stay there. It will follow us back. So as we head into the 20th anniversary of 9-11, with the prospect of Al Qaeda 3.0 following us home, uh, that to me, and, and, and further, 
the fact that we're in a worse place than we were in 2001. Some future soldiers are going to have to go back to deal with this. But now we have no bases. Our local allies will have been hunted down. The Taliban are armed to the teeth from all of the weapons that they have now taken from the Afghan army. Uh, we do not have a single country in the region that's agreed to host American forces or a base. Yeah, this... uh, I don't know how we deal with this in the future, but there will be more American blood spilt uh, because of this policy decision. And that to me is what's so upsetting.